Hey, we're going to talk about a new drawing type called an isometric drawing. This is a drawing type that is for 3D drawings to show 3D of an object. So that means we're going to show width and height and also depth. So you'll be able to see all three dimensions. Also, it's a drawing type so that you can see all three of those dimensions equally. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at this cube right here. And notice that I'm holding an orientation that you can see three different faces. I'll call this the front face with this little um, point sticking out. So we'll call that the front. This will be the right side. It's to the right. And we'll call this the top. So you're kind of holding it where you can see the front. Right now you can kind of, kind of see the right side. You can see the top, right? But what face is predominantly facing you as I hold this cube and present it to you in this orientation is the front. So an isometric drawing is one that's going to allow you to see the dimensions of width, height, and depth. We're presenting them all in proportion. Okay, so right now I'm presenting width and height much more strongly than depth. Um, so to get it to where you can see, in essence, with a cube, the front face, the right face, and the top face all equally, I would need to position it so that this corner, where the front, the right, and the top all meet, is pointing straight at you. And I need to get the right amount of orientation this way. You can see the front and the right are kind of fading away here to only see the top. And if I rotate this way, the top is going to fade away. All right. Now, if you look at this and we look at the edges where the front and the top meet. Okay, so this edge right here. And we look at the edge where the front and the right side meet right here. And these, those edges form a letter of the alphabet and it is the letter Y. Now we have special graph paper used to draw isometric drawings. It's called isometric graph paper. And if you look at the lines and we bring together, okay, the vertical line, you should always have a vertical line with isometric drawings, okay, with the other two directions, and you form the letter Y, the angle between these lines is all 120 degrees. So because they're all equal, that is why we're presenting all of these dimensions of width, depth, and height equally. All right? So let's try to do some examples real quick. You can do them with me, but that is what an isometric drawing is. Okay, first I'd like you guys to try a cube. Go ahead and pause the video right now and give it a shot. Okay, hopefully you gave it a shot. Um, I'll do it in Sharpie real quick. One suggestion is to pick out a corner to start with. And so, how about I use this corner? We talked about the Y, and you can even just go one segment by one by one. Basically, where these planes come together and start to see a corner. And then from there, you can start to look at how many units, what are the dimensions, and rebuild your drawing. Right now, we're just going to practice drawing some isometric drawings of objects we already seen so we're really just copying them to get practice but this is a three by three by three cube and I'm starting right here so I'm going to focus on this front face right here where this is the top right corner so it's going to be three units tall so the vertical line gives me my height and then these diagonal lines going this direction give me the width so it's three by three so I'm going to make it right here three by three and a height of three so I drew one face now how about I do the right face, it's going to be underneath here. When I draw the lines this direction, kind of the up and right direction, that's allowing me to see depth. So it's three units deep as well. So there's depth, and again the vertical lines are my height. So there's the, the front face, the right face, and then the top. Now the top has depth, so I need to show the depth here. And it also has width. The top is width and depth. And there you go. Let's try this one. I'm going to start with this corner right here. So I'll find a point on my graph paper, and I'm just going to give myself kind of a one by one by one just to sh start showing those different planes. And I would focus on one face at a time. So I'm going to do this L-shaped face. Starting at that corner, I'm basically going to trace my way around. So the front face has width, so I'm going in this direction, and it has height. I won't see depth, so I'm going to go be working in this direction and vertically. So right here, it looks like I'm two units tall. 
Now if I count this out, it's six units. So let's see, two, four, six. So it's going to go all the way to here. And on the back, the height is four units. So two, four. And then the width of this bump out is two units. So again, width is this way. Height is this way. A height of two there. And then a width of four. That should take me all the way back. All right, now I'll focus on these other faces. This face right here, it's a vertical plane, has a depth of two and a height of two. So there's my depth of two and a height of two. Now I have a horizontal top face. It has a depth of two units already defined right here. I just need the other edge to show depth of two. And it has the width of four parallel to that. Okay, and then I have another vertical plane. It, this object turns up has a height of 2, height of 2 right here I already had, and then this depth of 2, and then the top. So a width of 2, a depth of 2, and there we go. All right, and there's another one to try. You can pause the video here and take a second and try that one. Okay, hopefully you tried it. Let me draw it. So again, I'm going to identify a corner to start with. I'm going to use this one. You might have seen that dot. And again, I'll just give myself a little line to start these. And I'm going to focus on this kind of U-shaped face. All right, it looks like I have a height of four units here from that corner. So I'm going to kind of work my way around that face. So I have height and width to show. Width's going this way, height's going this way. So a height of four, let's see, two, four right here. I have an overall width of six, so width is this way. Let's see, there's two, four, six. I have a height of four again on the back, so there's two, four. Now this bump out on top has a width of 2, this has a width of 2, and then those um, bump outs have a height of 2. The overall height's 4, but those are 2 units tall. So do that, and there's my U. Okay, so now I'll take some of these other planes, these other faces that I can see. So this right face here has a depth of 2 and a height of 4. So here's my depth of 1, 2, depth of 2, and a height of 4. And then on top, this top face has a width of 2 and a depth of 2. So there's my width, my width, those are my depths. Same thing on the back there, let's just do that one. So a depth of 2 again. And I need to add some extra lines in to understand this. So this vertical face, this edge here, um, has a height of 2, so I'm going to come down 2 units, and that kind of runs into that. Um, and it has a depth of 2. I need to show from this corner to this right here. So I need to show that crease, or that edge where those two planes meet. And one of the things you'll notice if you compare these two is that your eye can get a little confused sometimes as you're looking in here. And so I have tried to help your eye see the three dimension by using what's called tonal shading. Okay, if you imagine a light source okay um, kind of up above and and behind the object maybe a little to the right so kind of picture the sun a single light source shining we're going to get some faces that get more light than others some are going to be darker more in the shadow and so we think of faces that are facing up faces that are facing to the right and faces that are facing out to the front and we determine which ones are going to get more light and less light. So I'm going to say, I'll kind of rank them one, two, or three. One's going to be the most light, three's going to be the least amount of light. So if the sun is up above, I'm going to say that the faces pointing up are going to get the most amount of light. And I'm thinking of this light source being up high, but also a little to the back. And so I think of the front face as being the darkest. So I'm going to put a three there for the darkest. And then two, I'll think more light can wrap around the sides and get the sides lit up a little bit better than the front. So I'll make that a two. So now I'm going to shade these surfaces accordingly. Okay, so anything that is, let me grab a pencil. Pencil is a little easier to do some shading with. Um, anything that's the brightest, I just won't even shade at all. Just leave it unshaded, okay? So my lighter, shaded but lightly shaded, the twos, are anything that's facing out in this direction. So that would be this face, okay? And I can even go outside the lines because I've got a good eraser. I can just kind of erase. So I'm just going to lightly go back and forth, okay? And I know that one looks pretty smooth. That's because I took my finger and I just kind of rubbed the pencil in. So 
you know, those of you will, will see who's an artist and who's not. I'm not an artist, but I know you guys in art class and sketching classes get pretty good about um, rubbing your fingers against your pencil to smooth things out. And I'll do the same thing here. Okay. Kind of think looks nice if you smooth it out. And then this front face I think was going to be the darkest, so I'm going to go ahead and shade this in even darker. So I'm just going to use my pencil, kind of rub it in, and we'll clean it up afterwards, but we're expecting that this is going to get the most amount of shadowing. And you'll see, I think, that this is where you're going to really make the average person, when they glance at your picture and your sketch, that they'll see the 3D object you intended to draw if you incorporate some tonal shading. Okay, so Clean that up. If, if I think this looks a little too close to the same dark, I can maybe lighten that face up just a little bit. And I could even darken this one closer there, you know, just kind of as, as those two edges that are both shaded get close to each other. Kind of make it. Okay? So hopefully you can see how what's called tonal shading can help your eye understand the three dimensional shape. So that was called tonal shading. Alright, thanks for watching this video. I hope you have some good luck drawing some isometric drawings.